What's going on guys, it's your boy Christian and in today's video, we're going to be going over the user interface in today's beginner's guide video. Just because I want to sum this up for you guys because there's a lot of buttons that we might not talk about when going through the beginner's guide. So let me go ahead and just take you over the buttons that we might have already talked about and some of the ones that we will encounter later on in the series so let's go ahead and jump into the user interface firstly what is user interface now your user interface is basically going to be whatever that you being the user is going to basically be interacting with on the device so the side of the camera is basically your whole user interface so all of these buttons and everything that you interact with is going to be your user interface we're just going to start from the front and go to the back here so firstly you have your nd knob basically this turns on the nd off on one two and three if you have those set in the camera internally uh let's jump up here we have the record button now this is something that you guys need to know because we didn't go over this earlier in the series so the record button is here which is going to be a start and stop so basic knowledge of record button start and stop there you have a hold button which majority of the time i keep this off and that's just because we don't usually have a lot of people touching on the side of the cameras when we're shooting videos or anything so that hold button is kind of obsolete for me and basically what it does is it allows you to hold all of the settings on the camera so if i had this in a um, you do see it does have that orange little indicator in there even though the camera is off it just has like an orange piece of tape or whatnot in there to indicate that the camera is in hold so any of these buttons are pressed nothing will happen basic knowledge of holding all of the settings in place and then you also have this dreaded full auto button right here on the back of the camera and whenever you press this one this one basically turns green to let you know the camera is in full auto now i don't use that majority of the time never really use full auto on a cinema camera if you have a camera of this caliber um hopefully you're learning the ins and outs of manual and not using anything auto because you're going to be getting way better quality way better footage way better videos out of doing basically everything on this camera manually so we're going to jump down um let me just go ahead and hold it like this we're going to jump down so under nd filter it has the preset now this preset is basically going to give you what it's saying so a preset is going to be one of those one two or three here on the nd and if you went variable that means you can set it and then that actually in ties with the knob right below it where you can move this up and down to change the variable in D and that leads us to the basically the switch right next to it which is the ND and iris switch so if you have it on ND this is going to control ND but if you had it switched to iris then this is going to control iris now on the opposite side of those buttons that we have right there is going to be your iris if you put push that it's going to basically auto iris for you as long as you have that button pressed and then you have push auto over here as well so all of these are going to be kind of like your auto buttons and then everything next to it is going to be your variable your preset and then everything from indie down basically trickles all into this knob right here number three is status and the reason that um you will see it in the b-roll that this one has those little uh ridges on it is because this is a customizable button so uh, this might be status for you, which basically you check the status of everything on the camera, what's plugged into the channel one on the audio, the input one, input two, input three. Um, it's basically giving you the status of just about everything. And then we go a little bit further back on this slanted side here, and you have the slow and quick, which we've went over this one in the frame rates video um, on the beginner's guide. Make sure you check that bad baby out below that one we have the picture profile button which these all have those ridges on those so they can be switched to something different i um, not really sure what i have mindset we might go over that in a separate video i don't think i've done a video on that yet here on the page but below that we have focus you can either put it in manual auto if you have an auto lens on that you can use autofocus with and then you have the push auto button so if you push 
on that push auto button if you have autofocus lens it's going to basically give you the focus now if you was using a autofocus lens and you had it in manual focus when you press this button the camera will actually put the lens in autofocus grab focus so whenever you let it go it's going to put you right back in manual focus so it's a good way to kind of guess see what the camera says is in focus and then go from there with setting everything else we're going to jump back a little bit further and this is actually your channel one and channel two volume knobs and basically the controllers to tell either the camera to do the auto um, levels on the audio or you can do it manually um, and then you can flip this bad baby down so I usually have mine in manual and I usually have mine set around 7.5 on both channel 1 and channel 2 I feel like that gives the best audio quality if I was to maybe like shout really uh, loud or anything like that it won't kill nobody's eardrum so let's go ahead and jump down from there and we have the display button now this ties into the monitor and whenever you press that it will display different types of information here on the monitor to you so that can be also switched and changed to do like maybe two different display sets or three different display sets in um, the monitor to make sure you know what's going on either waveform you want to take off like the bit rate and the frame rate and you want it all to be clean you can do all of that with the display button menu button is of course the settings menu uh, you want to go in there to do any settings change any you know audio changes all that's going to be in that menu and that's located right there on the camera below that you also have the selector knob and dial where you will navigate the menu with that dial right there so the thumbnail button which is right in front of that that basically takes you to basically whatever you shot last so if you had a memory card in this camera um, if you press thumbnail it's going to take you right back to the spot where the footage is it's gonna basically allow you to preview the footage if you press on that and you're also able to just scroll through the footage and see exactly what you have so let's go ahead and push in front of that and this is where we've been actually talking about a lot in the beginners guide so far and that's going to be on this front area of the camera here so we've talked about iso and gain we've talked about white balance and we've talked about the shutter which is all in these respectable settings area right here and you do have the low medium medium high for your ISO and then you have your A and B preset for your white balance and then shutter speed ties directly into that selector knob dial that the menu ties into too so that's how the FS5 interface looks um, you have two more buttons of course your on and off button are on here as well and then you do have the uh, select slot because you can put two SD cards in this camera I usually rock zero so I haven't open this bad baby in a little minute so um, I usually record straight to the ninja but you have two slots and then you also have your USB connection in there as well if you needed to plug the camera up to a computer to do maybe like a firmware upgrade or anything of that nature so um, on the top part of the camera um, since we're done with the kind of user interface side we still have more user interfaceable areas on this camera on the top we have a zoom rocker so if you have a servo lens or anything like that you're able to control it from the top part of the handle here on the fs5 now you do have the record and start stop record button right here on the top so it's basically kind of giving you different options of starting the video and then this is also a selector switch that you can basically put that in hold so you don't necessarily want to press it on accident that's a good feature because most of the time i have it in hold because i don't start the camera that way anyway so don't even want to press it in the first place so we have the grip on this side and this is going to be the last interfaceable area on the sony fs5 and over here you do have your focus mag which is automatically gone ahead and labeled for you right here on the grip you have the zoom rocker again right here on the handle grip just in case you have that servo zoom lens on you have a um release button here which basically release the handle grip so you can put it in different orientations if you want to do some low stuff you want to 
well, we're gonna do some high stuff and then wanna do some low stuff, then you're good to go with that. Uh, behind that, of course, you have your dedicated start stop record button so it's one on the right side of the camera top of the camera and the left side of the camera so you basically can start the fs5 on any corner of the camera uh, behind that you have a fn button and that fn button is going to allow you to basically use it as a custom button and you're able to put anything on that and press it to do exactly what you want it to uh, behind that to the left side we do have the joystick now the joystick is going to allow you to move through the menus and everything and just do stuff a little bit more fluently than having to reach on the opposite side of the camera um, and then we have of course um, a couple more buttons here we um, have the line in um, mic and then the mic 42 volts over here for the input one on the Sony FS5 and then we also have the grip release and then of course the lens release over here and we have our last but definitely not least I talked about this in another video make sure you guys are checking those bad babies out but the last button is going to be the number six here on the handle grip and it's right there where maybe your index or your pointer finger will sit or your middle finger or your ring finger so it's just you know depending on which finger you want to use um, you can use to press that button and set it to do just about anything right there while you're still holding the camera so you're basically able to operate the whole camera from this hand grip so um, that's another big operator thing here for the Sony FS5 so that's actually gonna be it for this video guys um, it was just a quick update and a quick little tour of basically what's going on here on the fs5 because we do have more videos coming out here on the fs5 so i made sure and i wanted to make sure that you guys knew exactly where all of the buttons were even though we will reiterate the button placement if we're talking about a specific setting or where a button is we will reiterate that but um i just wanted to take you guys around the camera and show you guys exactly where everything is so you'll be a little bit more familiar when we get later on into the series anyways this has been your boy christian hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did make sure you check out some of my playlists i have a rig builds playlist and also the sony fs5 beginners guide which is what you're watching right now is doing really well so make sure you guys continue on the rest of the videos and um make sure you drop likes on the video and hit that subscribe button if you just so happen to be new and want to see more videos just like this one Anyways, this has been your boy Christian, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.